In this Exadata Cloud at Customer quick demo, we're going to look at provisioning a database with automatic backups. So once again, the first thing we do is we go into our Cloud at Customer console and we will drill down into our virtual cluster. As you can see here, I go into the cluster and we get to the main cluster screen. You can see from here, I can click Create Database and this pops up an easy to use wizard. I'll provide the database name. I will provide a unique name for the database. I will pick the version of the database. You can see we have many different versions available to us in this clouded customer environment. We can give this database its first PDB name. So I will call this DBSG PDB1. You can select an existing home that's there or create a new database home associated specifically with this database. And then in that case, it would actually copy the home, but we'll use an existing database home. And now we'll type in a password for this administration. The password must be two uppercase, two lowercase, two special characters and two numeric characters. This is always the toughest part for me. We'll retype that password. And once we do that, we have the choice of picking either the transaction processing database or a data warehouse. And as you can see, a transaction processing database will be built with a bias towards random data access. A data warehouse database will be more parallel data scanning type of activity. So it'll create the database with those best practices within an Exadata cloud customer environment. So for this case, we'll just leave it at transaction processing. Uh, we'll enable automatic backups for this database. We can choose to have no location, which means it will want to go to a disk group with our environment. We can pick object storage, which would be an object storage in our uh, cloud tenancy. Uh, so we'd need the OCID for this. So we could then specify that object store within the cloud. We can pick an NFS mounted location, whether it's ZFS, which is our recommendation, or we can use a recovery appliance, the ZDLRA. For this demonstration, we'll use the NFS mount point, And you can see we have a ZFS uh, box in our tenancy. We click on an uh, automatic backups and we're ready to create the database. There are some advanced options for this. We can see we can change the character set of our database if necessary. We can change the backup retention if we don't need to keep it for that many days. And we can add a tag to this. Uh, once again, the tags are for reporting and uh, that type of operation. So you can see group these things in, into logical groupings. So once we hit create database, you can see we get back to the database screen. It says the database is provisioning. Uh, you can see some of the details about this database that we're now provisioning. If we go back to the virtual cluster screen, you can see in the virtual cluster screen that the DBSG database is indeed provisioning. Going out to my Linux desktop real quickly, I wanna just see the process and see what's happening. So I go to node one in my cluster, this is an eight node cluster, and I'm going to look for good old uh, DBSG processes. And you can see, yes, indeed, the instance DBSG one has been created and started. Uh, if we go to the trace file directory for this and just look at the alert log, I always find it interesting to watch this while my database is being created. We can actually see what's happening and it's actually creating the database. It just doesn't copy and magically have it there. It has to go out and create it. So once the database is created, you can see, come back to our virtual cluster. We see the database DBSG is available and ready for access. Uh, we drill down in DBSG, we can see some interesting things here. The work request will actually show us that the database uh, creation process succeeded. Uh, the automatic backups are enabled, as you can see under backup, but there aren't any backups that haven't taken place. Just going back to the Linux desktop, if I do a server CTL status, you can see the database instances are all up and running on each node in the cluster. And then we do a server CTL config database, and we can see that uh, there's database instances on all the nodes in the cluster and that we have these different services that have been automatically created just by that process. So 
This concludes another quick demo of provisioning a database within the Exadata Cloud at Customer environment.